Hey guys, welcome back to Skylanders Ring of Heroes. Now today's video is gonna be about Boomer. I finally managed to six star and awaken him. It took me about five days of solid farming, maybe five and a half, and I don't even wanna count how many gems it cost me in refreshes, but it is definitely worth it. And he's also actually helped me manage to three star B9. Um, I'll probably do B9 three star in another video because I think we'll, we'll just cover Boomer in this one and talk about the nerf to him and that he is still fine. And then in tomorrow's video, we'll do the B B9 run and I'll show you the strategy for that and all that sort of stuff and the other units. Otherwise, the video might get a bit long. So we'll jump into Boomer and we'll go through his skills, his stats, his runes, and then a general overview of him being used for farming, arena, and then in the B8 dungeon because he really does speed up and make more reliable uh, my B8 runs. So we'll talk about that. Um, so the first thing we'll look at is his skills. He's got this first skill, does AOE bombs. Uh, when unawakened, it's single target. This is why awakening is so good for him. Really speeds up runs and stuff like that, the AOE factor. Still really good damage against single target when you get a bomb on. Um, his second skill is a, an attack up for one turn with an 80% chance for all allies. Now, that's really nice in itself. At max skill, it does become 100% chance to get attack up for two turns on a three mana cooldown. So at the moment, it's four mana, 12 seconds. Not too bad. Um, like I said, it is amazing when skilled up, but it's not the kind of ability that I'd look at skilling up this early in the game. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as is, but it's still an amazing ability and has a massive multiply. So it does really good damage as well. And these are the main two skills that you will be using sort of um, in arena, in dungeons and stuff like that. Uh, this third skill, you might use it in Arena a bit more or something like that once you max skill it. Um, but for now, all it is is flat AOE, six mana, six second cooldown. Um, the beauty of this ability comes in when you skill it up. And what it becomes is it's an AOE that reduces the bomb counter on all enemies by two. So if they have a bomb on them for five turns, you use this. It'll bring the bomb counter down to three turns. And then by, the, by proccing the end of the turn, it brings them down to two turns. So it makes bombs explode a lot quicker um, and also becomes a four mana cost. But for now, this is mainly, I only mainly use this in conjunction with the AOE bombs for farming easier sort of stages. So we'll, we'll go into that a bit later. Um, but now we'll look at his stats. So his stats are actually pretty nice for an attack unit. Um, when I talk about whether he prefers percentage or attack, the baseline I use is six star runes at plus 15, because that's sort of going to be where you get end up end game. Five star runes are fairly similar um, for their baseline, whether you um, whether you want a percentage or attack. And then four stars are more slated towards percent. But I feel like if you've got this guy um, five star, six star and awaken, you're more likely using five and six star runes. So that's the, the, the quick disclaimer, but um, his attack is really high. So um, he really wants attack percent if he's above that 2240 line so definitely wants the attack percent and obviously a strike set's real nice on him too because he's getting extra mileage out of that 25 percent attack that he gains his defense is super low uh he gets about half the effectiveness using defense percent so definitely try to avoid putting defense percent on him um flat is definitely the way to go if you're using it for a main stat on that slot four and then hp his hp is actually really high he actually warrants using percent for HP, um, if you're going to put it in that slot four position, so it's not it's not massively over it. So if you put flat um, HP because it has better substats, that's going to be your best option because he's not that much over um, the line where he's going to be benefiting too much extra from HP percent. Maybe at plus five, he'll get a lot more mileage out of it. But at plus zero, he is fine with flat or percent HP. Just go for the one with the best substats. So. With that, we'll jump into his runes. Obviously, like I said, the strike set, and then I've gone broken just to try and get some attack runes. Um, any other set on here can be fine. An effect accuracy set would be really nice to help him land his bombs. But like I said, the stats are probably the most important thing first up. Um, so as you can see, mine's just fairly average runed. I do have this one six star rune on him, which is really nice. Has the effect accuracy, has the attack. So when we look in terms of substats, you're looking for that effect accuracy and attack. And then besides that, basically any HP or defense to try and get him a bit tankier. So that's that rune. His slot two is an attack percent. Um, I'm, I haven't actually pulled any flat attack or attack percents for these two slots. Um, a flat attack six star would probably be better stats than a five attack, uh, five star percent. Um, but yeah, if I can pull any attack runes for these slots, I'll put them straight on him. He is lacking in the damage a little bit. Um, 
But then the other slots, it's just basically looking for your sub stats, trying to complete your strike set if you can, and yeah, moving forward. But I don't have many six star runes for these slots yet, so um, I've got to keep farming. But that one I put defense on. Like I said, you want to go defense flat over defense percent because defense percent is really horrible for him. Um, and yeah, the last slot, obviously, attack percent. So mine has a lot of room for improvement. Um, I think for reliable B9 runs, you definitely want a few more uh, six-star run, six-star runes on him. Um, but that's where mine's is at. Like I said, that accuracy and attack is your main stats that you want to look for in substats. And then obviously going for your attack percent on your two and six, and then either defense, HP, or HP percent on the slot four. So that's him in a nutshell. Um, I'll take you through what he can do. So we'll, we'll jump into a farming stage first up. And this is why I suggested if you don't need the Wham Shell for B8, do the Boomer first because um, I've been using him as my farmer here. I've, I've done a couple runs for Wham Shell because I'm still thinking Wham Shell might be needed for um, B9 reliable runs, but I'm not too sure. So I just did a few runs over here to level this guy. And his runs are pretty much 30 to 40 seconds. Because of that double AoE and sometimes one-shotting enemies, even though my runes aren't the best, uh, as you can see, it's about a 30-second run, which is super quick when you are going to farm. And um, it's really handy. So that's definitely the reason I'd suggest uh, doing the Boomer before the Wham Shell if you can get away without having the Wham Shell in B8. If you need the Wham Shell in B8, obviously you're going to farm him first, but... Boomer is a fantastic farmer on those easier sort of stages. On hard hard modes, he's not as good because um, he won't be killing units as much, meaning he won't get that mana regen and be able to spam his uh, third ability. So it's a bit of a balance. It just comes down to testing and finding out what you like to use um, on him if you're using him as a farmer, depending on the difficulty of the stage. So the next one we'll look at is the B8 runs. Now, uh, since I built my Boomer, I've, put, I've just put him into my team here. You can actually do this with um, Boomer and Stealth Elf. At the moment, my Stealth Elf just doesn't have the tankiness to survive the boss by herself. But um, this this team here, I tried this for about 30 runs. It's about 80 to 90% successful, just these two, and it's really quick. Um, but because it's not as successful, I did decide just to throw my Whirlwind in. It's a little bit slower, but really reliable. Um, what I might do is I'll leave the Whirlwind out and just show you guys this run because um, not as many people will have Whirlwind. So you can just literally, with a decent Broccoli guy, obviously my guy Broccoli guy is six star level 66 plus two. Um, not maxed, but still really decent. Um, but Broccoli guy really does help um, in these sort of stages. So as you can see, that, that second attack with the attack buff did a lot of damage and it didn't crit. It almost killed that big guy, which is a, a really a lot of damage. So... Um, you can see why he does get really good. That was another 5,400 from that one. And the other thing is the attack up is really nice because it makes Stealth Elf's damage so much more. If she has attack up and then crits with that second skill, um, mine's is doing sort of half the boss's health in damage in this B8. And then obviously you also have the AoE bombs, which is speeding up the waves and also good damage on the boss. As you can see, sometimes he will die to this stage, um, but like I said, if you have a tanky enough stealth elf, that's where you can get away with this. Um, but hopefully he'll give us the attack buff and you can sort of see the extra damage that he adds onto the stealth elf. So there's the attack buff. She's only using skill one and it didn't crit. So that didn't demonstrate it too well. But um, you can see those bombs doing decent damage. So this basically just increases the reliability that if my stealth elf doesn't crit, which she hasn't crit yet, um, you can still actually kill the boss. Okay, that was her first crit. But... Um, you can see with that, because of the attack buff, the extra bomb damage, um, you can still kill the boss without a crit from Stealth Elf before he gets the, to the revenge. Um, the problem with this team, without the extra healer or support or anything, becomes that when the... Ooh, let's have a look at that. Uh, we'll keep that. Um, the problem becomes that when the Boomer dies in the waves, which does happen sometimes, my Stealth Elf still isn't 100% to solo the boss, so... He does really speed it up, like I said, like that. And if you had a better Stealth Elf or better better runes for Boomer, um, like I said, both of them only have one six-star rune each. So there's still a lot of room for improvement in that. And then the final area I really wanted to look at him is going to be in the arena. And we'll jump in here and we'll go to Jewels. 
And I really like him in Arena. He synergizes real well with my team of Whirlwind and Stealth Elf. It gives me three different elements, so it gives me a bit of elemental diversity. Uh, this guy, I think I was avoiding because he has just a really solid team, but I think we'll just hit it. Um, he's got really good power too. So the reason I was reluctant to do this because obviously one of his two life units is going to want to kill my Boomer and then it's going to make it a struggle and Ember's just really good, but we'll jump into it and I'll show you what my standard thing is. So my standard play is to try and get rid of the life unit, the Stealth Elf with my Stealth Elf and then use Boomer's attack buff. So what I normally do is we'll go attack this Stealth Elf, then use Boomer's attack buff and then charge up my charge skill from the Whirlwind. As you can see, Stealth Elf lands the kill. Luckily, both these guys charged. And then basically, if you get the kill with Stealth Elf, you can basically just let it auto because you get the mana regeneration so you can use other other skills. If you don't land the kill, then it's going to be important to get that heal from the Whirlwind up. But that's pretty much how it's working. We might do a couple more just to sort of show you the damage he does do. Because as you can see, he managed to one-shot that... Um, I can't remember which one I attacked now. I think it was the Ember. Um... But really, really good damage on that second skill without actually critting. So this is a standard sort of team you see. Um, Enigma's not in there as much anymore. He's got a bit lower power. Um, we'll do this one, then we might refresh and hit another couple because I've really got to start doing some arena attacks. I've been avoiding arena while I was farming for him because I had my best runes on my Stormblade, but now I should be good to farm arena pretty hard. So once again, we'll kill the Stealth Elf, then use the bomb. Okay, so this is where it's going to be important to actually land some kills. And we should be good now. Um, the bombs will go off. But I thought we were going to be good if we landed our own bombs. <laughs> However, we didn't. So as long as this Kaboom doesn't kill, we should be fine. Yep. I think I think we'll have it now. As you can see, that 6,000 damage from a non-crit on that skill 2, then giving the attack up. The other amazing thing about... Uh, the Boomer with Whirlwind is that he grants the the um, attack up to the Whirlwind, which also increases the regenerate heal, which is fantastic. As you can see, my Whirlwind's healing uh, for almost a thousand per tick um, at five ticks per application of the heal. So 5,000 per unit she's healing and she's only on one attack rune. I put her on an extra HP rune to give her a bit more tankiness and she can still heal for almost a thousand per tick with the attack buff and she's only got a five star plus 12 rune so the synergy between attack buffs and whirlwind works really nice we will see if we can hit someone else really high and just see if we can really show him shining uh bro getter another one who's always on stream he's got his boomer he's working on it um so bro getter thanks for always being on stream dude really appreciate it but uh now we're gonna hit you <laughs> um all right let's hit it so once again this one i think i'll try and attack the boomer with my stealth elf and get him out of the way and then we'll move on to the Kaboom. Oh, whoops. I did that wrong. That's all right. We should still be fine. The Boomer should one-shot with the non-crit. And then it's it's GG from there. So I had been, like I said, I had been avoiding Arena. But with the Boomer, I feel like I'm now set. Now that I've got my crit runes back on Stealth Elf, I'm good to go in and attack in Arena. And hopefully uh, do a bit of a climb next week. This week I've been real lazy and haven't done it enough. But that is going to be the basic Boomer summary uh, post-nerf. On the global server, I'm really enjoying him. I'm definitely glad he's the first unit that I completely um, maxed out or six-star awakened. Um, he's going to help me a lot. Uh, the other thing he did help me with is, before we go, is the Mirage Tower. Now, I was stuck at level 55, and he managed to carry me through level 55. I'll do a video about that sometime in the next week or so. Um, but yeah, he was amazing for that. Uh, still struggling on the, on the level 60. I tried it twice, failed on the wave, so... Um, that is one of those levels that Kaboom is really nice for, but uh, I think I'll be able to get it. I might just wait another 13 days and then try it when I have better stats and stuff like that. But that is going to be it for the Boomer, guys. He's an amazing unit. Really glad I built him. Um, tomorrow's video will be the B9 three-star run. I'll go through the whole team. I'll go through the strategy, and you'll probably watch me fail it. So thanks for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.